So this video is going to be a little bit different from most of the ones I do. I normally like to sit down and set up the camera and show what's going on. But in this case, it was taking a long time to deplete the batteries. The rack just wasn't using the amount of power that I was hoping it was. I was hoping to get at least two kilowatts and it was sitting around 13 or 14. To be extra safe, I only ran the rack when I was awake and at home. So it took about six days of real time to deplete the batteries. One of the things I was trying to figure out, you'll see this in the video, was the smart shunt can only see the power traveling through the shunt. So the power consumed by the BMSs themselves, the screens, I, I had the screens off most of the time. None of that was being tracked. I had hoped to be able to see in the BMS itself exactly how much power was consumed. And I think I can with the cycle, you'll, you'll see down in the video, but the point I'm getting at is, I don't know if I have a really accurate view of how much power was consumed, but close enough that I'm pretty confident in the health of the batteries. I'm also going to say that because I was just going in and checking on the batteries periodically, when I saw something was happening, I didn't want to take the time to set up the camera because I wanted to get it on film right away. On film, shows how old I am. So the camera is going to be a little bit shaky and it's, it's just not going to be my usual video. It's like a test results video. That said, I've already got an idea of what I want to do for the next video, which will be set up to be more my usual style where the camera's actually set up and it's not a shaky cam. So I'll talk a little bit about that at the end of the video, but for now, yeah, fair warning, not the best video quality, but I think the results were really interesting. Anyways, so it's been about six days since I started the discharge test. You might be thinking, wait, six days? How has it lasted so long? I've only had the system running when I was awake and home. If I had to leave for any reason, or when I went to sleep, just to be safe, I decided to shut everything down. After this much time, it's still showing about 11% remaining. I don't know how accurate that is. If I look at the smart shunt, it's telling me that I've got six and a half hours to go. Assuming this is right. For some reason, a few days ago, the estimated remaining percentage of the battery just absolutely fell. I'm not sure why. So I went back and I averaged out the percent remaining as reported by the BMSs and reset the Victron's state of charge to match the average of the BMSs. That explains that. If you look, corrected, it's a pretty consistent curve. The smart shot in the Quattro, therefore the VRM, is only showing the power that is passed through the smart shunt. The smart shunt has shown that I have discharged 1,536.2 amp hours, but that is missing any parasitic draws inside of the BMSs themselves. Now, I have been leaving the screens unplugged. I just plugged them back in before I started recording. So I'm gonna have to do some math, but I believe it's about 750 watts per day was being burned by internal losses. So when I'm done with the capacity test, I'm gonna take the Victron numbers and add about 750 watts times six days if it ends tonight. You can see we're currently sitting at 79.8 kilowatt hours with about 10% left, give or take. So we're looking like we're gonna pull 88 kilowatt hours as reported by the smart shunt, which is pretty damn good. Now what I'm curious about I'm trying to do this and hold the camera at the same time. I know I've got this in screen recording, but still. Can I see how many? Yeah, so the BMS is reading. I'm going to do this for each BMS. But right now, the BMS is reading that I've consumed. Uh, I set the battery capacity to 280 amp hours. Oh, the voltage deviation is starting, um, starting to climb. I think I'm uh, definitely getting close to the end here. Remaining capacity is 25.2 amp hours. So that's a little under 10%. This is battery A. Yeah, battery A is showing 9% remaining. With a 0 0.037 deviation, 0 0.026 on B, 0 0.046 on C, 0 0.024 on D, 0 0.055 on E, and 0 0.037 on F. So the differences are starting to climb. So when the batteries finally die, I am hoping I'm going to be able to look in the BMS app to see how much power was discharged from the perspective of the BMS, add the six of them up and get a watt hour number there. 
and see how different it is from the smart shunt. I expect a difference because of the parasitic draws inside of BMSs. It's going to be really curious to see how different that actually is. It's still balancing and that's another topic. I had a lot of people say the balance voltage should be set much higher. I'm going to do some parasitic drain tests in the next video. Cycle capacity is 282.7. I guess that's what it's assuming it's going to have when it's all said and done. I thought there was a logging... Uh... Hmm. I was pretty sure somewhere I could see how much was actually consumed. Well, I guess we'll see if the cycle capacity changes. Right now it's 282.8 amp hour. I don't know how that was calculated, but I'm assuming that's going to match the total number of amp hours pulled on this discharge. Huh, I really thought there was going to be a more specific reading. Uh, well, I don't have the tripod set up, so I hope this isn't too shaky and sorry for the weird angle, but let's see how, uh, let's see how much she gives and how accurate we can figure out she gave. Back in a minute. Okay, it was showing 4% left and then it all went to zero. So it guessed a bit wrong. Yeah, this is completely disconnected. In fact, I don't even know how it's still running because all of the outputs are off. The normal UPSs are now running on their own internal batteries. Yeah, I just, damn it, ah, I just missed the shutdown. Okay, turn off the inverter. Where is it? Yeah, see, it still thinks there's 6% state of charge, but clearly that's not true. Well, I mean, that's why we're doing this. We knew we'd have to calibrate. Okay, I need to shut this stuff down. Sorry if I seem a little chaotic right now. I heard the low voltage alarm go off and I tried to get the camera and everything set up before it all shut down and where's the phone all right what does the phone say we did uh I was gonna say seriously how is that still running but it just shut down no it didn't it just turned off the screen ah all right. I don't know where it's getting the power. There's no output. Charge is on, discharge is off, discharge is off, discharge is off. Ah, this one has discharge on. Okay, <laughs> battery C is being a champ right now and keeping everything up and running, at least enough to keep the Victron gear going. It says we pulled, it said we discharged 83.8 kilowatt hours. Now, that was over six days. We saw that we were pulling about one kilowatt hour a day in parasitic loads, but that was with the screens. I had turned all the screens off, so it's say 750, 700, because I said it was 288 watt hours per day for the screens, not knowing the efficiency of, well, I know the efficiency of the, of the buck converter. I just can't do the math right now. Let's round it to 300 watt hours per day total for the screens um, contributing to the parasitic. So we'll say 700 watt hours per day was being just burned by the BMSs, probably because the balance voltage is set too low. That is 0.7 times six is 28 is, Maddie's doing math here. 1.4 times three is 2.8 plus 1.4 is 3.2 kilowatts. So if 3.2 kilowatts is a reasonable guess of parasitic drain, that gives me, well, 87, 87 kilowatt hours on a pack that should have 86 kilowatt hours. I am very happy with that number. I am very happy with that number. Okay, the light isn't particularly horrible here. I don't know where the mount is for my, for my camera, so I'm just holding it and talking to the camera. I'm sorry if it's a little shaky. I'm going to go through the BMSs to see if they have better numbers. I'm going to see, I'm going to see how close I can get the numbers. I, I don't like using fuzzy math like the 700 watt hours internal discharge based on one test. Key thing is I'm close to what I expected out of these packs. After the first few cycles, the amount of capacity tends to drop off and then flattens out and starts and starts the gradual decline as the cycles go. But I'm within I'm, I'm within a, I'm within spitting distance of what I paid for. I am perfectly happy with this. I'm actually really, really happy with this. All right, this is probably my lowest production quality video ever. Such is the nature of trying to watch and wait for a test to finish. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm really happy. <laughs> I just ran my server rack for the better part of six days. Not continuous, to be fair. 
that's a hell of a long time to run a rack of servers. I don't want to leave these at a low voltage, especially knowing they've got fairly high parasitic draws. So I am going to capture the screens of all of these right now and then turn on the charger. Oh, and this, by the way, is with the shutoff set to 2.6 volts. So there's actually more room in these if I did a complete discharge. We're going to see in a second here that one cell... Yeah, there's a cell. Cell 13 is at 2.635. So that's what triggered the shutdown. But the pack average is 2.73. So this might be where you'd want to do bottom balancing, I suppose. I'm not going to bother. It's telling me a cycle capacity of 296.2 amp hours. Hmm, interesting. I don't know how that number's calculated. Is that what I actually discharged? I'm gonna have to do some homework, but again, right now I just wanna record the numbers. This one says a cycle capacity of 279 amp hours. Cell 11 is 2.64, and they're rebounding as well. I bet you I could suck more power out of these if I wanted to, but I don't, because I'm already happy. 270.7, now this is pack C, and it's the one that was still showing 4%. I don't believe there's 4% left in it, but yeah, it's showing a cycle capacity of 270 amp hours. Why would it be lower than everything else? Pack D is showing 283 amp hours, 285.1. And the last pack, the last pack is 286.3. There we go. I can add those numbers up later and I'll put them on screen. All right, let's plug this in and set this to charger mode. Oh, right, I uh, go to settings, battery, set this to 0%. Okay, so the state of charge has been synchronized to 0%. Yep, 0%, and we start charging. Let's charge it back up. I've got some parasitic draw tests I wanna do, and I need to get the pack recharged, and that's gonna take a while. So this is the Digital Mermaids version of trying to do a test. It's not as elegant as Andy or Will or Lithium Solar, but it's what I can do for you. I'm the Digital Mermaid, and I got what I paid for, and I'm happy. See you next time.